thyrotoxic uh, crisis or thyroid uh, storm it is rare uh, thyrotoxic crisis or thyroid storm is rare and it is it presents as a life threatening exacerbation of hyperthyroidism uh, so it occurs with hyperthyroidism and it is a life threatening exacerbation it is accompanied by uh, fever will be there delirium uh, seizures coma vomiting diarrhea and jaundice so cns manifestations like uh, delirium seizures coma vomiting diarrhea and jaundice so the mortality rate is high as 30 percent so even with treatment the mortality rate is high so why this mortality rate due to cardiac failure uh, arrhythmia or hyperthermia so because of uh, excess amount of uh, thyroid hormones uh, there will be hyperthermia cardiac failure and arrhythmia so why does this thyrotoxic crisis occur because it will be precipitated by acute illness so what is the acute illness that precipitates this thyrotoxic crisis it is stroke uh, infection trauma uh, diabetic ketoacidosis and surgery especially on the thyroid or uh, radioiodine treatment of a patient with partially treated or untreated hyperthyroidism so the precipitating factor for this thyroid uh, crisis is stroke or infection or trauma or dka surgery especially on the thyroid or radioiodine treatment of a patient with partially treated or untreated hyperthyroidism so what is the management it requires intensive monitoring and supportive care so what we have to do if patient develops this thyrotoxic crisis so we have to treat so that thyroid hormone synthesis is reduced because thyroid hormones are causing this crisis so what we have to do we have to give uh, drugs which reduce the thyroid hormone synthesis so large doses of propyl thiouracil uh, how large doses so how much large doses means first we have to give a loading dose that is 500 to 1000 mg of loading dose we have to give and then we have to give 250 mg every fourth hourly so propyl thiouracil how much we have to give we have to give a loading dose and then we have to give 250 mg every fourth hourly it should be given either orally or we can give through nasogastric tube or per rectum so what is the action of this uh, propyl thiouracil uh, it inhibits the conversion of T4 to T3 so propyl thioracyl it inhibits the conversion of T4 to T3 so propyl thioracyl it inhibits the conversion of T4 to T3 T3. So, if propyl thiouracil is not available, we can give methimazole. So, how much methimazole we can give? 20 mg every 6 hourly. So, used in doses of 20 mg every 6 hourly. So, 1 hour after the first dose of propyl uh, uh, propyl thiouracil so we give propyl thiouracil and then after one hour what we give is we give stable iodide five drops uh, SSKI every sixth hourly we give stable iodide five drops every sixth hourly is given to block thyroid hormone synthesis via the wolf chiakov effect okay so it blocks thyroid hormone synthesis main thing is we have to block the thyroid hormone synthesis so how do we block the thyroid hormone synthesis via the wolf chiakov effect so this delay allows the anti-thyroid drug to prevent the excess iodine from being incorporated into new hormone uh, so excess uh, iodine uh, it can't be incorporated into new hormone and we also have to give uh, we also have to give propranolol so this propranolol it uh, reduces the tachycardia and other adrenergic manifestations so we can give 60 to 80 mg every fourth hourly or we can give iv propranolol so propranolol 60 to 80 mg every 4th hourly or 2 mg IV every 4th hourly can be given. Although other beta adrenergic blockers can be used, uh, high doses of propranolol 
it decreases T4 to T3 conversion. So we can use other beta blockers but high doses of propranolol it decreases T4 to T3 conversion and doses can be easily adjusted. And we also have to uh, exercise caution to avoid the negative uh, acute negative inotropic effects. But controlling heart rate is very important because if we don't control the heart rate, patient will go in for high output heart failure. And we can also give short acting IV esmolol which uh, also decreases the heart rate and additionally we can give glucocorticoids so we can give hydrocortisone bolus dose 300 mg we can give and then we can give 100 mg every 8th hourly if infection is present antibiotics and uh, cholesteramine to sequester the thyroid hormones so to sequester the thyroid hormones what we can give cholesteramide cooling oxygen we can give and IV fluids we can give mainly we, we have to give propyl thiouracil if it is not available methamazole and stable iodide one hour after that every sixth hourly propranolol <coughs> esmolol and glucocorticoids then coming to ophthalmopathy uh, when it is uh, thyroid ophthalmopathy when it is mild or moderate uh, it uh, spontaneously improve no active treatment is uh, required so general measures include thyroid hormone levels we have to control smoking cessation and uh, we have to give the uh, explanation of the natural history of ophthalmopathy if there is any eye discomfort what we can give we can give artificial tears so these are hypromellos or carbomer paraffin based eye ointment and dark glasses with side frames dark glasses artificial tears hypromellos paraffin based eye ointment and periorbital edema uh, how does this respond to a more upright sleeping position if there is a periorbital edema we have to tell the uh, patient for a more upright sleeping position or we can give a diuretic and uh, during sleep for to avoid the corneal exposure we have to use the uh, patches and uh, minor degrees of diplopia if it is there we can give prisms uh, fitted to the spectacles so diplopia can be treated with prisms fitted to the spectacles and some authorities they also advocate selenium 100 micrograms and few of them they also recommend selenium um, if there is a severe ophthalmopathy if there is uh, optic nerve involvement or chemosis which is causing the corneal damage uh, this should uh, uh, be managed by an ophthalmologist so if there is a severe ophthalmopathy with optic nerve involvement or chemosis which is resulting in corneal damage uh, this can be treated with an ophthalmologist so pulse therapy with IV methyl prednisolone so what we have to give IV methyl prednisolone so how much uh, methyl prednisolone 500 mg methyl prednisolone weekly once for six weeks and then 250 mg once weekly for six weeks this is preferable to oral glucocorticoid so whenever there is ophthalmopathy instead of giving oral preparations of uh, methyl prednisolone we have to give iv methyl prednisolone so how much 500 mg once weekly for six weeks then 250 mg once weekly for six weeks so when uh, glucocorticoids are ineffective so we have uh, taken all the precautions we have given uh, glucocorticoid but in spite of that um, patient is still not responding so then what we have to do is orbital decompression so orbital decompression means we remove bone from any wall of the orbit so thereby uh, we allow the displacement of fat and the swollen extraocular muscles so when there is no root what we have to do we have to cut the bone so that the swollen muscles and fat is displaced and the trans antral root is used most often but it requires no external incision so proptosis uh, it uh, receives an average of 5 mm uh, but there may be residual or even worsened uh, diplopia so by doing this approach proptosis might reduce by 5 mm so once the eye has stabilized surgery may be indicated for uh, relief of diplopia and correction of the appearance 
सो वंस द आई हैज़ बीन स्टेबलाइज देन वी कैन टेक द पेशेंट फॉर सर्जरी फॉर करेक्शन ऑफ डिप्लोपिया एंड करेक्शन ऑफ द अपियरेंस एक्सटर्नल बीम रेडियोथेरापी हैज़ बीन यूज बट द एफिकसी ऑफ दिस रिमेन्स अनकलियर एंड अदर इम्यूनो सप्रेसिव एजेंट सच एज रिटुक्स मैप हैव शोन सम बेनिफिट अदर इम्यूनो सप्रेसिव ड्रग्स लाइक रिटुक्स मैप बट द रोल इज एड टू बी एस्टाब्लिश्ड थैरोइड डर्मोपति डज नॉट यूशली रिक्वायर ट्रीटमेंट बट इट कैन कॉज कॉस्मेटिक प्रॉब्लम्स और इंटरफियर विद द फिट ऑफ शूज so surgical removal is not indicated if necessary this thyroid dermopathy can be treated with topical high potency glucocorticoid ointment so how can we control the thyroid dermopathy by topical high potency glucocorticoid ointment under an occlusive dressing and we can also give octreotide in some cases so octreotide might also be useful for thyroid uh, dermopathy in some cases